the world watched in horror, unable to comprehend the sheer brutality of the acts committed, the headlines screamed their names, echoing through the corridors of our collective consciousness. Alexander Pachushkin, Anatoly Moskvin, Anatoly Onoprienko. Names that have become synonymous with terror and inhumanity. These were not fictional characters in a horror movie, but real-life monsters who walked among us, blending into society. They were real-life monsters who walked among us, hiding in plain sight, their true nature concealed behind a mask of normalcy. Their crimes shocked the world, leaving a trail of devastation and heartbreak in their wake. Their motives remained shrouded in darkness, a mystery that continues to baffle even the most seasoned investigators. I have spent my life writing about crime, delving into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. I have delved into the darkest corners of the human psyche, exploring the depths of depravity and evil. But even I was unprepared for the horrors these men inflicted, the sheer scale of their cruelty and malice. These were not crimes of passion or desperation, but calculated cold-blooded acts of evil, meticulously planned and executed. They were calculated cold-blooded acts of evil, devoid of any semblance of humanity or remorse. This essay will take you on a journey into the heart of darkness, exploring the very essence of evil. We will explore the lives and crimes of these three notorious serial killers, examining the factors that shaped them. We will examine the events that led to their descent into madness, tracing their path from seemingly ordinary lives to monstrous acts. And we will grapple with the unsettling question, what makes a person capable of such unspeakable acts? Prepare yourself for a journey into the darkest recesses of the human mind. You are about to enter the chilling world of serial killers, a world where the line between humanity and monstrosity is blurred. The Bitsevsky Park in Moscow was once a place of peace, a sanctuary where the hustle and bustle of city life seemed to fade away. Families picnicked under the trees, children played joyfully, and laughter echoed through the air. Joggers enjoyed the fresh air, finding solace in their daily runs amidst the greenery, but all that changed when Alexander Pachushkin, infamously known as the Chessboard Killer, began his reign of terror, turning the park into a place of fear and dread. Pachushkin was a quiet, unassuming man, the kind of person who could easily be overlooked in a crowd. He blended in seamlessly with the crowd, his ordinary appearance masking the sinister intentions that lay beneath. No one suspected the darkness that lurked beneath his surface, a darkness that would soon reveal itself in the most horrifying ways. He lured his victims, mostly elderly men, to the park with promises of vodka and companionship, preying on their loneliness and trust. Then, in a brutal and merciless act, he would bludgeon them to death with a hammer, leaving their lifeless bodies as a grim testament to his cruelty. Pachushkin kept a gruesome tally of his murders, each one meticulously recorded in a twisted game of life and death. He marked each victim on a chessboard, aiming to fill all sixty-four squares a chilling goal that drove his killing spree. He craved notoriety, a macabre fame that would set him apart from other serial killers, making him a figure of infamy. He confessed to killing 61 people, but only 49 murders could be confirmed, leaving many to wonder about the true extent of his crimes. His trial was a media spectacle, drawing intense public and media attention, his crimes sending shockwaves throughout Russia and beyond, forever changing the perception of safety in public spaces. Anatoly Moskvin was a man of contradictions. He was a respected linguist, fluent in 13 languages. He was a loving son who lived with his elderly parents. But behind this facade of normalcy hid a deeply disturbed individual. Moskvin harbored a macabre secret. He exhumed the bodies of young girls from their graves. He mummified their bodies and dressed them as dolls. He created a bizarre and horrifying collection in his apartment. He talked to the dolls, sang to them, and even held birthday parties for them. He believed he could bring them back to life through some mystical ritual. When the police finally raided his home, they were met with a scene straight out of a nightmare. Anatoly Onoprienko was a man possessed by a murderous rage. He was known as the Terminator and the Beast of Ukraine. His crimes were as brutal as they were senseless. He would break into homes in the dead of night, armed with a sawed-off shotgun. He targeted entire families, killing men, women, and children without mercy. Onoprienko's killing spree lasted for six years. He terrorized Ukraine, leaving a trail of blood and shattered lives in his wake. He claimed to hear voices in his head, voices that commanded him to kill. He showed no remorse for his actions, his eyes reflecting a chilling emptiness. Section 5. A Brush with Darkness. A Personal Reflection. 
I remember the first time I heard about Alexander Pachushkin. It was a name that would soon become synonymous with fear and horror. It was a cold winter day in Seattle, the kind of day where the chill seeps into your bones and lingers. I was working on a story about a local crime, a routine assignment that had become all too familiar in my line of work. The news came on the radio, interrupting my thoughts with its urgent tone. A brief report about a serial killer in Russia, a man who had taken the lives of many, flashed across the airwaves. I felt a chill run down my spine, a visceral reaction to the sheer brutality of his actions. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was connected to this story somehow, as if the darkness he embodied had reached out across the globe to touch me. Perhaps it was the nature of my work, the endless hours spent delving into the minds of criminals and the aftermath of their deeds. The constant exposure to the dark side of humanity had a way of leaving its mark, a shadow that followed me even in my quietest moments. Or maybe it was the realization that evil knows no boundaries, that it can manifest anywhere, at any time. No geographical or cultural limitations can contain it. Whatever the reason, Pachushkin's story stayed with me. It haunted my thoughts and invaded my dreams. It reminded me of the fragility of life, how easily it can be shattered by the malevolent actions of one individual, and the ever-present potential for darkness to erupt in the most unexpected places, lurking just beneath the surface of our everyday lives. As a writer, I often find myself reflecting on these stories, not just as news, but as a mirror to our own vulnerabilities and fears. They force us to confront the uncomfortable truths about human nature and the thin line that separates us from the abyss. In the end, it's this reflection that gives my work purpose, a way to make sense of the senseless and to find meaning in the darkness. Section 6. The Making of a Monster, Nature versus Nurture. What transforms a human being into a monster? Is it a matter of nature or nurture? Was Alexander Pachushkin born with a predisposition for violence, or did his troubled childhood shape him into the killer he became? Could Anatoly Moskvin's macabre fascination with dolls be traced back to a childhood trauma? Did society fail to address the warning signs in Anatoly Onoprienko's behavior, allowing him to become the beast of Ukraine? These are the questions that haunt us. There are no easy answers, but by exploring the lives of these killers, we can begin to understand the complex interplay of factors that contribute to the creation of a monster. Section 7. Beyond the headlines, understanding the human cost. It's easy to get caught up in the sensationalism of serial killer cases. The media bombards us with images and stories, feeding our morbid curiosity. But we must never forget the human cost of these crimes. Behind every headline, there are families shattered by grief. There are lives cut tragically short. There are communities living in fear. We must remember the victims, their stories, and the impact these crimes have had on their loved ones. Section 8. The thin veil of sanity delving into the killer's psyche. To truly understand these crimes, we must delve into the minds of the killers. What motivated them? What were they thinking? What drove them to commit such unspeakable acts? Alexander Pachushkin craved power and control. He saw himself as a god, deciding who would live and die. Anatoly Moskvin was driven by a delusion, a belief that he could bring his dolls to life. Anatoly Onoprienko was fueled by rage and a sense of righteousness. He believed he was on a mission to cleanse the world of evil. By understanding their motivations, we can begin to grasp the depths of their depravity. Section 9. Echoes of Evil. The Legacy of These Crimes. The crimes of Alexander Pachushkin, Anatoly Moskvin, and Anatoly Onoprienko continue to haunt the world. Their names are forever etched in the annals of criminal history. Their cases serve as a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurks within humanity. The legacy of these crimes extends beyond the immediate victims and their families. It has shaken our sense of security. It has forced us to confront the uncomfortable reality that monsters do exist and they can strike anywhere, at any time. Section 10. Seeking Answers in the Darkness. A Call for Understanding. The stories of these serial killers are not meant to entertain or sensationalize. They are meant to challenge us. They are meant to make us think. By understanding the factors that contribute to the creation of a serial killer, we can work to prevent future tragedies. We can advocate for better mental health care. We can create communities that are more supportive and less tolerant of violence. We must never stop seeking answers in the darkness. Section 11. A chilling reminder, evil lurks closer than we think. The world is a complex and often frightening place. Evil can lurk in the most unexpected places, hidden beneath a veneer of normalcy. 
Alexander Pachushkin, Anatoly Moskvin, and Anatoly Onoprienko were not monsters born. They were human beings who, through a complex interplay of factors, committed monstrous acts. Their stories serve as a chilling reminder that we must never become complacent. We must remain vigilant, aware of the darkness that resides within us all, for it is only by confronting our own demons that we can hope to defeat the monsters among us.